Let's break down what it takes to make a hundred grand. I break it down like this. What does it take to make 10 grand a month? 2,500 a week. And so then what would it take to make $2,500 a week in this business? Now, when I say that to you now, from your perspective now that you have now, versus when you came into the business with me 10 years ago, is making $2,500 a week hard now? Oh, no. Oh, no. No. When I first said what? it to you, your hands were sweating, everything. You got nervous. You got nauseous. You went home, stayed awake. What's the difference? Uh, I, know the, I know the process. I know the system. I know how to do it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Life Insurance Academy podcast. And it's Roger and I. We are hanging out. We're just <laughs> rocking it out, having a conversation. You're in the middle of a conversation of two guys talking about insurance sales. We wanted to get back in today with you um, and revisit some of our early content. Um, one of the things that we noticed that was happening on our distribution of our podcast content was that some of the very early podcasts, the the very first one, and I mean, there's thousands and thousands this is back of in 1987. On this. <laughs> no, not when quite we that started far. this. One of our very first episodes was called "Can I Really Make a Hundred Thousand Dollars in Life Insurance Sales?" And some of the people that were connecting with us now is like, "Where are the first episodes right. gone?" And I guess Spotify and Apple and some of these other platforms they only go back so far with the content. And uh, some people were asking us for that. Now, you can find it on our website at liapodcast.org, but we couldn't uh, get it in there. So we're actually going to do a deep dive into that very topic because yeah. people are still asking the same question. Yeah, and, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting topic because our our perspective has changed a little on this. Yes. You know, we've seen a lot of stuff in the last two years. I think that question, we originally asked it, was in the was it during COVID or was it no? On the it was front January side? of 2020, our January. very first episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Our very wow. first episode, wow. man. It feels like <laughs> doesn't it feel like forever ago? <laughs> yes, it does. It's literally only been 24, <laughs> like 36. Yeah. No, it's only been it's only been like 30 months. Yeah, 30 months. That's wild. And by the way, for those of you who are listening, those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, this month we had a record month. We're over oh, 34,000 downloads yeah. this month well thank you guys we appreciate your boom your attention and checking it out we need some like big applause but like yeah. stadium level yeah. something something yeah. huge over thirty four thousand yeah. people listen to this content on That's a monthly huge. basis all around the world all around the world everywhere yeah i don't know how they sell policies in sri lanka but it's happening <laughs> i guess hey i'm not i'm not gonna dismiss anything however you do it Mogadishu, yeah, Mog yeah. I don't know. I, can't even I don't know. I don't know where they're. I don't know where everyone. Tanzania. Hmm? I think yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know why you said that. Yeah. Just, so cool. we, they could be listening from anywhere. So we have a different perspective, different conversation here, uh, and this is and this may be helpful for you. One of the reasons why this episode was so valuable was because um, a lot of our agents were giving this to new prospective agents. I to, think we need to, to frame it up out. again. Do they even remember what the question was that we or posed in that first or, one? Or just rewind it. Yeah, <laughs> that question was, can I really make $100,000? Really six figures. Six that figures? Fi can I really, make six figures? Right. Mm -hmm. can I really make six figures? It was six figures. Can I really make six figures in insurance sales? In insurance sales? Yeah. It might have been $100,000. We'll, we'll, we we we'll go back and look. We'll go back and look. For some reason, I'm thinking it's $100,000. I can see it in your eyes. It could be. I'm going to go look. But let's go. Let's jump in. I'm going to do it as we roll. Yeah. So the question is, uh, can can you do it? And yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. That's an old reference. That's, I don't know what you're you talking about. You don't even about. know that. No. We can delete that. You've lost me. No, yes. <laughs> yeah. No deletions. One yeah. take. There's, <laughs> yes, there's absolutely the opportunity to make six figures. And we've, uh, man, we've heard some stories. We've seen some things. Uh, we've seen different processes come into play. We've seen different products come into play mm -hmm. i mean from from a new agent starting at 18 years old and on track to be a six-figure earner on one side uh, oh you found it what is it what is uh, it uh, oh can i really make a hundred thousand dollars that's what it was titled hey look look right here zoom in yeah. 
flew in. So the very oh, it first, changed. It did? <laughs> oh, no. What happened? Oh, crazy. <laughs> it changed. It was there, though. It yeah. changed. Oh, it's right. It's still right here. It's okay, right here. Perfect. Let's go. See it? See it? He was, Can he you was bring right. It in? Tip See of that? the hat to you, sir. I yes. win. You win. A million dollars. Well, uh, at least some... Some lunch, some quiz notes for if old you time had a million dollars. Oh boy! <laughs> All right, let's go. I think that's Adam's favorite band. Um, so can I make six figure? Or can I make a hundred thousand dollars in insurance sales? And I think maybe in my heart, that question is a little short sighted. So now I want to extend that. Now it I is. want to extend that. Yeah. Yeah. So to say one hundred thousand, I think is a little short sighted. So now it's right. can I make multiple six mm-hmm. figures? And and <laughs> it's it's funny <laughs> saying that because. I know sitting across from the table when you're first hearing about this opportunity, what, what is the per- percentage of people who do make 100000 in the in the United States, do you think? I think it's gone up. Yeah. I think it's gone up some, but I, I remember years, probably like 15 years ago, it was less than 5% of the people. Yeah. I think the number's higher than that now. I would have to, I would have to use the Google machine yeah. to figure that out again, but... Yeah, so it's it's still it's a, you're in you're in the you're in rare air once you push pack push past six figures for sure. I think it's yeah. I think most people want to make six figures. Yeah, but it's certainly not an average American income. So I I understand the question because I had the same question. I don't even, I didn't know if I had the question when we met and had that conversation. And you said, Chris, it's easy to make a hundred thousand dollars. Nobody showed you how to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, so I would I freely admit fully short-sighted on that because i only knew what i knew up to that point and the idea of hitting that that six figure mark or hundred thousand hundred thousand mm-hmm. just hundred thousand was going to be like am i going to work three jobs <laughs> is, mm-hmm. that, is that what's happening here is how do i do this how does it, how do i get there so in july in june 13th 2022 okay. just a little while ago according to the u.s census bureau the percentage of Americans making over one hundred thousand a year was twenty four percent. Wow, twenty four percent. That was in twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah, it's it's probably higher now. I'm um, guessing maybe maybe a little higher, but that actually might start coming down again here soon with inflation and, right. and cutbacks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah. Um, now, according to another article, percentage of house households. Earning over one hundred thousand annually has increased significantly in recent decades, up fifteen point two percent in nineteen eighty to an estimated thirty percent of households. So, if you think of households, that is oftentimes two income families. Mm. Um, yeah, you know yeah, that t- makes sense. T- two income families, and that number is now just over thirty percent for households who make over one hundred thousand dollars. But I mean, uh, it's it's a significant number. You know, when you're coming out of high school or coming out of college, I think the number that most people are are shooting for is how do I make that kind of money at some point in my life? Yes. And so when we first looked at the the insurance opportunity, I know I saw it. I don't know if you saw it, but no. I think it, a lot of it has to do with perspective. Correct. Correct. And I think a lot of our listeners or the circle that they they have of surrounding them, you know, with conversations that they have in regards to insurance. Mm-hmm. They're not aware that there's a system, a process to be able to generate that type of income. You know, they're they're thinking friends and family, and you can that way too. Uh, yeah, I guess. Mean, yeah, yeah, that's a. That's I a, don't want to do that. Right, right. That's a and that's a hard road to to hoe. Is that what you say? <laughs> How do you <laughs> using say? all these sayings? <laughs> these, I I hung out with my grandpa a lot when I was young. <laughs> right. Same. That's a hard road to hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a hard road to hoe. So. Um, <laughs> And in in our world, in the system that we run in with uh, lead generation, opportunities to get in front of people, Mm -hmm. uh, there are systems in place to accelerate that. Yeah. And uh, I know know you are a numbers guy. Um, It's one of my growing skills. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that was helpful for me in our conversation to see... Oh, okay. It's simply um, an issue of getting the right numbers in alignment. Yeah, and it's all about the amount of people that you see. Right. The demand is there. So, mm-hmm. first of all, we want to state for the record, the demand in this market is there. Uh, as far as the senior market goes, we're talking about life insurance sales at the moment. Uh, but as far as the senior market goes, final expense sales, people preparing for end of life costs, final expenses. 
There are still over 10,000 people every day turning 65, and that number is going to continue for many years still. That's the largest population bubble in American history that's going from, you know, working to not working. And a lot of those people haven't properly prepared for, um, you know, uh, end of life expenses, end of life costs, funeral uh, benefit plans, funeral plans. Um, It's one of the largest um, middle income groups ever to go through, uh, you know, retirement. It's one of the largest, most affluent groups ever to go through, but it's also one of the largest low income Correct. categories to go through. And our final expense market tends to lean to that middle to low income families who are were living paycheck to paycheck. And now that they're on Social Security, that's their primary source of income is the Social Security or not a lot else. Some on a small pension, but those kind of went away. You know, now 401ks have come into place. But if you hadn't been at a consistent job or contributing to a 401k, um, you're primarily living on Social Security. Right. So there's a um, because of the number of people that are moving into that category of not you know working to not working and that are in that low low income uh, uh, class uh, there's a huge need for final expense so is the need there in that market yes uh, mortgage protection home sales home sales have been flourishing right they've just been, been nuts absolutely on a tear and so even now when they say they're cooling off a little bit or they're slowing a little bit and you know this this podcast may not be as evergreen as we want it to be but right now you know home sales are are still you know there's a ton of people still uh, buying homes and refinancing and as a result of that there's a lot of people uh, that we can market to for mortgage records people who've just refinanced their home or bought a new home hundred thousand two hundred thousand three four hundred thousand dollars in a loan and they want to protect that and we can market to those people and generate leads. So very two special niche markets in the life insurance space that we can create lead opportunities for that make the idea of actually hitting $100,000 very attainable if you realize, okay, there's two very, very viable niche markets there. Yeah. Then there's some other market opportunities like helping people understand how to protect themselves from a fluctuating stock market, like what's happened since January of this year right. till now. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people's 401ks have been plummeting. Uh, Inflation is rising. Uh, Interest rates are going back up. And people's retirement that they thought was secure in in, uh, December, not so secure now. So those people want to protect their income. With, and so we have fixed index uh, fixed in uh, you got this fixed buddy. index <laughs> annuities yes uh, that are available for people where we can protect the floor so they don't lose money but have a, an opportunity for gain and then of course other people who are seeing people go through this financial trauma of the stock markets up and down they're going maybe there's a different way and they're allocating money inside of an IUL over funding it so they can get the the cash growth advantage so opportunity is enormous yeah so the trick is how do you capitalize on that opportunity so i'm going to ask you this okay i'm gonna this is this is my devil's advocate question okay because this is different this is different than when january 1st of 2020 right Mm -hmm. so this is my devil's advocate question you ready Ready for this? Because I got to act. Do you ask this in a weird voice? Yes, I do. I have to ask this. Is it a movie character? No, no. By golly, Roger. (laughs) Who speaks like that? Nobody. Nobody. (laughs) Leave Um, it to Beaver. Yes, yes. By golly, Roger. We're in a recession. For crying out loud, this. There's no way. There's no way that the demand is there. As a matter of fact, there's tons of agents out there. They're already seeing these people. By golly. So don't tell me that this is a good opportunity that you can make $100,000. Was that convincing? No. Okay. Well, you get the idea. (laughs) Too many by gollies. (laughs) Is that the issue? Too many by gollies, yeah. (laughs) So between 2020 and 2021, just in those years, during the pandemic, the insurance, the life insurance industry alone, which was already a trillion-dollar industry, grew by over 18%. What that means is that People are wanting to protect the things that they have. Yeah. They want it. So the market exists. They want it. And Mm -hmm. it's still growing on a northeast trajectory. Once you add in Medicare, property and casualty, regular health insurance, under 65, this is a two to three trillion dollar business that's on a northeast trajectory of growth like we've never seen before. People want to protect the things that they have. They want to protect their family. They want to protect their assets. They want to make sure that the people around them are going to be safe and they're taking value in it. Now, now it's like, how do I learn how to take advantage of that? And how do I get yeah. in front of some of those people yeah. 
uh, with life insurance sales. So what say you yeah. about that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, imp- I just, I want people to hear that. I yeah. think it's important, especially for people who are, who are caught in the news cycle. They're hearing all this stuff and they don't know if there's, uh, they're used to what they consider secure, mm-hmm. what, you know, their security blanket of their job or whatever, even if they're maybe unhappy there or, you know, they're happy not making as much money as they think they can. And they're afraid to step out into something that they feel is, could be unsafe or insecure. But the reality is everything is. I mean, we're seeing downsizing, beginning to see it. Like mm-hmm. if, a, if, a, if a recession continues, we're going to see more of it, you know? Yeah, if inflation keeps going up the way it's going, um, layoffs will come. I mean, Tesla, of all companies, oh, right. just announced that they're uh, going to cut back 10,000, right. you know, workers. I mean, mm-hmm. those companies are announcing that. There's, you know, that's the front end of something else. Like, we got to make a correction here soon or, you yeah. know, think some things are going to happen. But people don't stop dying. People don't stop loving their families. Right. And uh, they don't stop wanting to protect the people they love the most. In fact... We can use insurance to actually counter, uh, you know, forces. to be a counter against mm-hmm. losing money in the stock market or yeah. being afraid. You can actually secure your finances through those things. You can secure your yeah. family. So the demand is there. Yeah. And we've seen it. We've, we've come through two or three of these in my lifetime. Um, and I've seen it every time. Like this, this, this industry is rock solid yeah. as far as opportunity goes. And I think uh, the other question in this in this is, and this will speak to your what you had asked me about um, as far as process, is can I do it? It sounds complicated. Is this something that I can do? Um, you know, there's all these different types of policies. There's medical questions. I've heard of medical questions. Do I have to bug my fam- family and friends? These, these fog of war, these un, you know, unknowns as you get into this. And the great thing that I appreciate in our conversation was you, you know, how do you eat this elephant? You take it one bite at a time and you, you just showed me a process Mm -hmm. or a pathway to get to this, this hundred thousand dollar mark and beyond, Mm -hmm. beyond. And that's, that's one of the things we do talk about is like expanding the vision of people, you know, hopefully maybe you're on, you're hearing this for the first time and you're like, man, I, I've never done it. I want to do it, but there's more, there's more for this. So, Mm -hmm. um, you, you, kind of broke this down and the idea of seeing a certain number of people. Well, even before that, I mean, let's break down what it takes to make a hundred grand. Okay. That's like That's entry level, entry yeah. level, six figures. Yeah. You're crossing the threshold. You're a baby six figure earner. <laughs> Just a little, little baby. You're crossing the threshold. Yeah. And if you break it down, what does that look like? Well, I'm not going to go all the way to a hundred. I'm actually going to go and say, what does it take to make 10,000 a month in a month? Because sometimes people think, well, they get out of school, they get offered a job, they look at things, and you know, <laughs> jobs are now paying somewhere between forty and maybe sixty thousand dollars a year, right? Yeah. Um, that's with some kind of education or some kind of skill set. You know, without that, you're looking maybe at somewhere between thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars a year, depending on again, mm-hmm. manual labor, skill set, demand, that sort of thing. Then student loans, it's. Well, I'm not talking yeah, about yeah. any obligations sure. you would have on the other side of that with debt. I'm just talking about earning opportunities. So most people get stuck there. I would break it down like this. What does it take to make ten grand a month? Twenty five hundred a week. It's not even twenty five hundred because each month has four point three three weeks in it. Yes, that's true. So there's an extra month. Some in people there. say that. I think that's a Canadian thing, but some people <laughs> say a different number, but we'll go with that one. Well, it has to be the extra 0.33 or else okay. there'd only be 48 weeks in a year. All right. Right? Well, 12 some, times 4. I, I use science. You use magic. I don't know how that works, but we'll, we'll go with that. So we're, go, we're going with, we're going with uh, if, we, if we normalize it at 2,500. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. it's 2,500 a week. And so then what would it take to make $2,500 a week in this business? Now, when I say that to you now, from your perspective now that you have now, Versus when you came into the business with me ten years ago, is making twenty five hundred a week hard now? Oh no! Oh no! No. When I first said what? it to you, your hands were sweating. Everything <laughs> you got nervous, you got nauseous. You went home, stayed awake. What's the difference? Uh, I know the I know the process. I know the system. I know how to do it. You know how? Yeah. So it's just knowledge. Uh, it's practice, knowledge, uh, support association, all that stuff. 
Okay. I, I, there was a literal, literal transfer of mindset. <laughs> transfer of mindset. Maybe not transfer. You lent it to me. So, um, yeah. If you had to break down 2,500 into what some of these applications and policies would look like to actually get to 2,500, what would your math look like? Even on your, even on the Chris Ball math, what does that look well, like? Well, it's about four apps a week. Four. Four. And, or, you know, I'm talking about final expense for mortgage protection, two and a half. Two and a half. Right. Two and a half applications in a week. So how are you coming up with that number? You've got a contract. You've got uh, a premium. Where premium. does that number it's come from? It's the premium number. Okay. Break yeah. it down So for me. it's uh, about $700 uh, annualized premium for a final expense, about a $1,000 dollars annualized premium for mortgage protection so when we say annualized premium it's the monthly payment the client is paying the company looks at that monthly payment and they annualize it they multiply by 12 and that's how they determine the annualized premium so somewhere around 60 to 65 dollars a month for a final expense so we'll say 80 to 100 for mortgage protection 80 to 100 a month for mortgage protection yes plan for a single person correct so and if you sell two of them husband and wife Oh you, yeah, you double that up there. Yes, and mm-hmm. you're saying you would need about four final expense plans and two to three mortgage protection plans to hit this number in yes. a week. Yes. How hard is that to do? Well, if you see people, it's not. So, how many They're people would you need to, to see to sell four? To sell four, um, how many people? I would say. You need so we'll talk with? at a, a new agent. Yeah, a new agent, probably eight. We'll say eight. You need to sit with. You need to present eight people? Eight people to hit the four. Okay. So now we have all these different options. You can see them face-to-face. You can talk to them over the mm-hmm. phone, or you can do it virtually with a Zoom. Yeah. Do the numbers change on eight with any of those in your mind? Mm. I think they do a little bit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So yeah, well, gonna... I, want, I want you guys to hear this mm-hmm. because when I'm sharing with you that maybe there's a couple different ways, we, obviously the proliferation of telesales or you know virtual sales because of the pandemic and what happened, and insurance companies make it easier to sell virtually, the numbers shifted a little bit because people don't have the same influence, quite the same influence, Correct. when they're not face-to-face. Yeah, it's right? different when you're in a home. You have a little, and you have more control, mm-hmm. you know, you're more engaging. Mm-hmm. There's more of a transfer of emotion. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So how would the numbers yeah. look on how many people you need to talk to, to? To Is it eight in all of those, or does it go up or down in any of those in scenarios? I... I know, I know it does. And full transparency, I don't, I don't remember what the difference is in regards to that. I think it's a drop off of a few percentages, but I don't. So if you're doing it over the phone or through Zoom, maybe a few more sits. Oh yeah, a couple more yeah, sits a week. It's not a huge, one or two more a week. Yeah, yeah. like not twenty a week, right. but more like ten a week versus eight. I would agree. Yeah. So eight in home face to face versus ten virtual or. Um, Zoom or telesales should get you at least four applications. Oh, definitely. And definitely. four applications with... And, and we're talking about new agents. And, new agents, And yeah. as, you, as you start to increase, you see those... Yeah. You see your sales skills go up and... And with a new agent, four applications is going to be somewhere between around 2800 and 3500 a week in premium. Correct. Premium. Mm-hmm. Well, you got lead cost in there. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So we got to factor that in. To a net earnings, so your earnings might be you might be pressing up on the twenty five hundred in earnings, but that gets you to ten thousand a month, right? And ten thousand a month times twelve months is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So you do have some wiggle room in there for leads investments. Yes, and you can mm-hmm. probably still get to your hundred hundred grand. Yeah, net net earnings. Yeah, possibly for sure, for sure. Okay, and and we talked about that in regards to, I mean. Your, your investment in leads. That was another one that was new to me in regards to taking care of my own marketing. That's brand mm-hmm. new. You know, if you're working a job, you're not dealing with that. The company you're working for is paying for marketing. Yeah. Right? Um, and that was a, a new process. But I will tell you, like, the, the idea of ownership of that was a big deal. I, I think it is for every agent. We talk about having skin in the game. Mm-hmm. And taking ownership of a lead in a process, man, that that changes your investment, your uh, your attitude towards this whole thing, and it really flips the switch when you're doing that. So, yeah. um, when we talk about the the cost, it's, I mean, today, I would anticipate that you're probably going to spend around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a week on on leads. 
on leads and marketing your business. Yeah, yeah. So that you can get in front of those people. Correct. Yeah. And I don't think, I think that would push you well beyond a hundred thousand if you're if you're investing a thousand to fifteen hundred a week. I mean, obviously, if you're doing uh, fifteen hundred a week, you can probably anticipate getting somewhere between thirty and forty leads a week, based on the type of lead that you're purchasing. Yeah, right. Um, that's somewhere between you know. I mean, if your leads were 40 bucks each, you know, times 40 leads is 1600. Mm -hmm. I'm just using that as a number. And on 40 leads, you're probably going to be able to set 20 to 30 <coughs> appointments. Oh, yeah. And out of 20 to 30 appointments, you should be able to sell 10 to 15 of those w- on a closing ratio of 50%, whether yes. it's over the phone or face to face. That should be your minimum numbers, like 10 to 15. Correct. Not eight. <coughs> right. Right. So your mm-hmm. numbers are going up. Yeah. And if you're doing mortgage protection sales in there and your average premium is a thousand, not eight hundred or seven hundred, mm-hmm. you know, now that's a different number again because four <laughs> applications, four applications times mortgage protection is four thousand. That was on eight sits. Correct. If I'm doing somewhere between ten and ten and fifteen applications, uh, you know, that number is significantly higher. We're looking it's at ten to fifteen thousand. Yeah. In a week. Right. In production. Mm-hmm. How does that translate into an average commission rate? Because that comes into play, right, to get you right. there. Oh, yes, Because some people, you know, mm-hmm. different models of business, what kind of commission rate are we talking about to get to that number on average? So I'm, I'm trying to understand. Like a contract rate. Yeah. So if you so have a about, contract. So we'll say, like, we'll say an agent who's been in and growing their business 100%. Yeah. 100% is decent. Yeah. So if we do 100% of first year's, uh, annualized premium as a commission rate. And they're for that advancing policy. you seventy five percent up front, and then yeah. months ten, eleven, twelve, you capture that back in twenty five percent. Yeah, I mean, you're still your <coughs> still your earnings. Mm-hmm. How it's paid out is a little different, but so at a hundred percent contract, if you write, you know, eight policies in a week, or you know, in your case here, if you're sitting with ten to fifteen, and you're you're writing somewhere between five to eight policies in a week, you're selling somewhere between ten. To uh, what was the number? Uh, we did a uh, thousand, right? Correct. Thousand, yeah. and you got eight. That's eight thousand. So five to eight thousand in premium, just on the low end. That's if your closing rate's only fifty percent. And I will tell you, after hundreds of thousands of policies written with our agency and our, our our organizations over the past, you know, since literally since we've been tracking it in twenty fourteen, um, the closing rate for new agents. Is somewhere it's, between fifty to sixty percent for brand new agents. Yes, it's on. It's pretty close on to the nose of fifty to fifty-five, sixty yeah. percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for brand new agents. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about seasoned seasoned agents who can really who yeah. really. Sell. And that may look like you're you're picking up a couple of couples mm-hmm. in there. You know, you sat with a, a family and you wrote two, or you know, you wrote the steps. You know, the the aunt who was over, or things like that as yeah. well. So, but those numbers all all line out for sure. If if you're if you are implementing a system, mm-hmm. that's for sure. If you're following a system, if you're doing uh, 15 <coughs> presentations a week and you're writing eight policies, and uh, you're averaging a thousand dollars a policy at eight thousand, uh, eight thousand. If you did um, eight thousand a week times four weeks, that's thirty-two thousand in earnings in a month. Even if you have drop off for placement and persistency, mm-hmm. and you're deducting earnings for uh, deducting uh, revenue for your leads and investments, you still can make easily <laughs> ten thousand a month. Right. If, even if I took the normal deductions from that, you're probably going to end up somewhere about twenty thousand a month on the low side, on the after very low side. After for, everything's covered, chargebacks or chargebacks, yeah. the policies not taken. A client changing their mind, your lead mm-hmm. investment, twenty thousand a month on the low end, and now you're at two hundred and forty thousand a year. We were you're asking the wrong figures. question. We were asking the wrong question. What's the right question? Can I can I make a million? <laughs> that's the question, right? How can I can I make a quarter million dollars in my first year in life insurance that's sales? The, that's a better I think question. That's the real question. Yeah. Yeah. Can you really make a quarter million dollars your first year in life insurance sales? And what would your answer be thing. now? Oh yeah. Uh, you say it like, yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll do it like this, okay? You're going to have to bleep me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Roger. Are you 
kidding me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. Right. A quarter million dollars <laughs> yes. is very doable. And I think that's a different perspective than what you had mm-hmm. 10 years ago. Yeah. I th- and I think a lot of people are probably there wondering this, this same thing. And uh, the great thing is you can do it. You can do it. It's just finding a good group of people to connect with, mm-hmm. um, asking the right questions, paying attention, and following the system. If you can stay plugged in and do that stuff, you know, do exactly what you're told. That's that simple. If you got someone that knows what they're doing that's yeah. telling you. Yeah, <laughs> telling you and telling you how to do it the right way, too. Yeah. And the great thing is, in this conversation, this is the front door. Correct. This is the front door, man. And those annuity conversations, the Medicare conversations, holy cow. I mean, that's yeah. a whole new This is just entry level. World. Yeah. yeah. So it can be done. So the question is not whether you can make six figures or 100000 like we asked in January of 2020. The question is, how do I make 250000 my first year? And what is available beyond that? It's an incredible opportunity. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We got a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Follow us on all of our socials, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, comment if you've got thoughts on what it takes to make $250,000 a year in this industry in your first year. We'd love to hear from you. If you've done it, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Drop some comments below. Uh, maybe we'll invite you on the podcast. And uh, maybe cool. you can be a guest to validate this question. Is 250 possible in your first year in life insurance sales? Have a great day. Go be a difference maker. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. 